In March 1934, Vanity Fair ran a mischievous editorial, a page of Ernest Hemingway paper dolls, featuring cutouts of various famous Hemingway personas. On display, Hemingway as a Toreador, clinging to a severed bull's head. Hemingway as a brooding, cafe-dwelling writer, four wine bottles adorn his table, and a waiter is seen toting three more in his direction. Hemingway as a bloodied war veteran. Ernest Hemingway, America's own literary caveman, declared the caption, hard-drinking, hard-fighting, hard-loving, all for art's sake. Throughout his life, additional personas would attach themselves to him. Rugged, deep-sea fisherman, big-game hunter, post-war liberator of the Paris Ritz, white-bearded papa. He relished all of these identities, and so did the press. When it came to selling copy, Hemingway was one of America's most versatile leading men, and certainly one of the country's most fascinating entertainers. By then, everyone had long forgotten one of his earliest roles, unpublished Nobody. It was one of the few Hemingway personas that never really suited him. In fact, in the early 1920s, strapped for cash, ravenous for recognition, he was frantic to rid himself of it. Even in the earliest days of his career, his ambition seemed limitless. Unfortunately for him, the literary gatekeepers proved uncooperative at first. Hemingway was ready to dominate the world of letters, but its citizens were not yet willing to succumb. Mainstream publications turned down his short stories. His rejected manuscripts came back to him and were shoveled through the mail slot in his apartment's front door. The rejection slip is very hard to take in an empty stomach, Hemingway later told a friend. There were times when I'd sit at that old wooden table and read one of those cold slips that had been attached to a story I had loved and worked on very hard and believed in, and I couldn't help crying. During such moments of despair, it's unlikely that Hemingway realized that he was actually one of the luckier writers in modern history. Circumstances often seemed to conspire in his favor. All of the right things made their way to him at the right moment. Motivated mentors, publisher patrons, wealthy wives, and a trove of material just when he needed it most, in the form of some delectably bad behavior among his peers, which he promptly translated into his groundbreaking debut novel, The Sun Also Rises, published in 1926. In the book's pages, those co-opted antics, benders, hangovers, affairs, betrayals, took on a new and loftier guise of their own, experimental literature. Thus elevated, all of this bad behavior rocked the literary world and came to define Hemingway's entire generation. <laughs>